Issue 65 We start out with some panels being wasted, with Brutus parading the captured heroes through the streets to make the people of Pleasant Zone despair, and then he's called by an impatient Eggman and told to just bring them to him, because I guess Eggman only takes satisfaction in that parading when he's the one doing it. Brutus mutters that Eggman's jealous of his victory, and is advised by the trooper near him to do what Eggman says for his own safety. He lashes out the soldier attacking him and threatens him like a control freak saying people have to listen to him. This idiotic mistake on his part against someone who is probably just trying to help him causes the soldier to drop his gun, and Amy's able to shoot Brutus with a laser from it. Sonic and his friends make a break for it, and the soldiers don't go after them right away because Brutus didn't tell them to, his control freakiness backfiring on him horribly. He asks the same question that I was thinking, wondering how Eggman ruled Mobius with robots like that working for him, and tells them to capture the heroes again, with one of the robots pedantically saying that he means recapture. Sonic, while strangely telling them not to take offense, reminds his friends that he moves faster on his own. What he should have said as an explanation was that there's chains connecting his feet to each other so he won't be able to run that way. Amy uses her new ray gun to blast away the links of the chains, but it's too late because some troopers are shooting lasers at them. Sonic says they could get an advantage a different way by going to the bridge, and when the bridge is destroyed, they jump to the other side. Sonic had correctly predicted that their lasers would destroy the bridge and let them get away. Brutus reveals that before he was programmed with Eggman's brain, he was serving the special badness service, and he reveals that those robots have special abilities, like the ability to fly across the bridge out of nowhere. I guess the reason Eggman doesn't just give every robot those abilities is because they're in limited supply, the things that generate them, or it's hard and expensive and time-consuming to give them those abilities. Maybe he needs a lot of rings, and there's only so many out there. Sonic's life is threatened when he's still in chains, and his desperation leads him to go Super Sonic, of course, since that tends to happen when the tension is the highest for Sonic. The only reason this could be not considered a get out of jail free card destroying the worst of tension is because this Super Sonic won't hesitate to attack his friends in a frenzy, but of course he's not allowed by the writers to kill them and probably won't even injure them ever, so there goes that, really there's no problem. I still love seeing him like this, though. Sadly, the story just ends, while for some reason Brutus still thinks he has a chance against someone who, that he should know is invincible. Wait, did Eggman? No, Eggman did experience Super Sonic firsthand in one of the summer specials. So, how does Brutus so ignorant? In the next story, the alarm goes off in Knuckles' chaos chamber, and the display in Haven shows a fluctuation in the island's force field that warrants of an intruder. Why the hell didn't it go off the last time Eggman sent a robot here? Why didn't that pathetic excuse for a force field keep that robot out? Knuckles suspects that it might just be dust causing the alarm to go off somehow because the machines are ancient. Is that why he dismissed the last robot? Well, I, I guess that's the reason he knew to go to Predicto in the first place. I suspect that he studied the ancient texts to learn how to get Haven back online, and that gave him the computer and engineering knowledge to do that sort of thing. Which is an interesting direction to take for Knuckles' character, but it should really be Tails who's got this kind of technology knowledge, not just him. He goes through the Zoot Tube to Megapolis City, which I almost read as Megalopolis from Archie Sonic. No, this Megapolis is different, because before the Echidnas left the Pony Island, this was the capital, so Echidnapolis, which has Mayan pyramids like Akita Paul should have had. I wonder if Sega took inspiration from the Fleetway comic when they wrote the Echidnas in the past in Sonic Adventure, because this is some coincidence that the Echidnas have Mayan architecture long before that game released, either that or Sega told them that they had plans for the Echidnas to be Mayans before Sonic Adventure was even released. But that's pretty far in advance. Knuckles hears a noise and goes to it while his thought bubble text is suddenly in blue for some reason, which doesn't mean anything. He sees a robot and stupidly talks to it rather than immediately trying to attack it like the violet hothead Knuckles is supposed to be. Seriously, if he's not that, who is he? Predictably, he gets thrown away by him as the robot tries to shoot at him. He's thrown again, thinks that for some reason the robot looks familiar, and he tells the robot to get out of the rubble as it goes under it. Then Dr. Phanitivus, I mean Dr. Zachary, shows up. A white echidna. 
And because I'm already familiar with Finitivus from way later, I'm already primed to just assume this guy will be a bad guy. Though, I'm aware that Finitivus didn't come first. Just Knuckles' luck that the only other Echidna he knows will be evil. Sadly, the story ends there without any explanation on why he's here. In the next story, after Metamorphia throws Short Fuse, she briefly turns into gas so he won't be able to grab her and turns back to solid form again just to attack him. But why? Well, I guess poison gas can't penetrate Short Fuse's armor. Short Fuse says he's made of the hardest metal ever and sends lasers at her, sending her into the Mega Mac. Techno just assumes she's already defeated and Short Fuse even lampshades this. And immediately, Metamorphia turns into a dangerous fish because the story hasn't reached its conclusion yet. Fortunately, when she grabs Short Fuse, he reveals that Eggman had the good foresight to let his feet shoot lasers on command too. Then he gets hit by a laser and Techno gets grabbed and taken away by Metamorphia as I wonder what the point of her coming here was when Short Fuse could have brought the bomb there himself and then left much faster. Instead, she's kidnapped and a bomb blows up on Short Fuse sending him under the water under twisted metal, knocking him out. But of course, he'll be just fine because he has plot armor. And actual armor. The first and third stories were by Lou Stringer. In the first one, Brutus attacks a soldier of his, and that lets Amy grab a ray gun, and Sonic and friends run across a bridge that collapses, but Brutus can fly over to them just fine, and the story ends with Sonic going Super Sonic. This was interesting to read, but why couldn't Sonic have gone super at the end of the previous story and skipped all of this padding? Money, that's why. In the third story, Short Fuse ends up damaged and knocked out by a bomb blowing up all of Chemical Plant Zone, and Techno gets kidnapped by Metamorphia, when she really could have just stayed home and let Short Fuse plant the bomb himself. During her grand first appearance, all she really did was make a bomb that hurts Short Fuse and gets kidnapped. Metamorphia's fight with him was only there to delay him so that he could get blown up when the timer ran down. And the second story was by Nigel Kitchen. And has Haven warned Knuckles that a threat has gone through the pathetic force field that can't keep any intruders away, and he finds what I guess is a robot meant to dig up Dr. Zachary, hence why it looked familiar to Knuckles, he probably saw it in ancient Texas. Unfortunately for me, I'm pretty sure I have vague memories of this guy being a villain from TV tropes, so I won't be that surprised when this perfectly innocent senior echidna randomly turns out to be evil. Though I would have been suspicious anyways, because Archie Sonic does the evil white echidna concept later with Finitus. I wonder how many times I'm going to find the two comics sharing concepts unintentionally.